Can they be once you describe? Yes. All right. The United States of America was never a sovereign nation. Just a business association, folks. It's the land-based states, the e-states, that are separate sovereign nations, according to the Constitution. And these sovereign states are not the names in which that was given, at least not the majority, at least not a portion of them. And the federal United States comprises of 57 said states, the 50 federal states plus the federal territories and possessions, which are counted as states of their union, which is supposed to operate exclusively in international jurisdiction of the sea. Continental United States equals 50 separate nation states operating as a nation on the land jurisdiction. The 50 uh, federal United States incorporated fi um, franchises of the United States of America, Inc. Incorporated, operating. The international jurisdiction of the sea plus seven nations. Of course, these seven nations are Guam, Puerto Rico, etc. Operating as the United States of America minor for a total of 57 states. Well, be, here to be that a citizen of the United States is a citizen of what? The federal federal government. government. This is catching versus steel. This is not a steel case. Yeah. Fahim Takamsa El Bay, Arte Washitaish. Arte Washitaish, brother Fahim, how you doing? Doing fine, my good brother. All right, excellent, excellent. Okay. Excellent. Myself, I'm, I'm mute myself out, that's what I mean. Okay. All right, brother. All right, so. And let's go to the court case. 1953, Kitchen versus Steel. A citizen of the United States is a citizen of the federal government. So that means that every citizen of the United States, lowercase c, has been federalized by the government. 1967. Also, congressional record, June 13, 1967, a citizen of the United States is a civically dead entity. So when you hear these morals talking about they're citizens of the United States, you have to ask the question, a citizen of the United States with a small c? If that is the case, then a civically dead entity. It's a civically dead entity. Just that simple. So, you hear some more say that they're citizens of the United States. Operating as a co-trustee and co-beneficiary of the PCT, the Private Construction or Constructive CTQ Trust of the United States Incorporated under the 14th Amendment. We are saying that the 14th Amendment was never fully ratified. They say that we are incorrect about that. But we're not. We have read several times in this class from lawyers in which that have stated that the 14th Amendment has never been fully ratified. So if they're saying that the United States citizens then they're saying that they're 14th Amendment citizens. They're saying that they're federally, federally recognized as such, which upholds the debt of the United States of America and the United States Incorporation in Section 4. This neatly explains once and for all what a citizen of the United States is in federal parlance, parlance as opposed to popular speech and underlines the need for Americans to forthrightly expatriate from any such citizenship. 
Well, why would you have to do so necessarily when you're not a citizen to begin with? So you simply have to state for the record that you're not a 14th Amendment citizen. Nor will you ever be. And according to the Dred Scott case decision, you're not a U.S. citizen, nor will you ever be. Because if you deny the 14th Amendment, then that puts you back into the category of the Dred Scott case or Dred Scott v. Sanford case of 1856 and 1857. And instead declare their alliance or allegiance to the land of their nativity. Well, remember, this is the reason why the federal government took over the positions from the states because the states were the ones in which that were attempting to operate under the Jim Crow and under slavery. And this is what Abraham Lincoln came forth was to stop that by utilizing the 14th Amendment. However, the 14th Amendment was never fully ratified. So for us, that's a loophole, as we can simply state that we're not citizens of the United States. But we have that we are part of parcel to the land of, as it states here, allegiance to the land of their nativity, of our nativity. So, were you born in the state of New York, or were you born in New York State? And under the indigenous information, New York State would be Montauk, as they was there, the Seneca was there. The Mohican was there. The Mohawks was there. The Iroquois Confederation was there in New York. A statue is not a law. And this is where they try to get you at by saying that you have violated the law. But a statue is not a law. This is Florinoi or um, Florinoi versus First National Bank of Shreveport, then a code is not a law. A code is not a law. Once again, they'll say that you violated the law. But once again, a code is not a law. In Recef versus Ray, in point of fact, in law, a concurrent or joint resolution of legislation of legislator is not law. A House joint resolution is not law. Koenig versus Fling. Ward versus State. State X relation Todd versus Yali. All codes, rules, regulations are for the government. They're for the government authorities only, not human creators in accordance with God's laws. Let me say this again. All codes, rules, and regulations or for the government authorities only. Those who have taken their oath to the Constitution. For it states specifically that any code, rules, regulations, ordinances, policies, etc. that does not correlate to the Constitution, to the Declaration of Independence, to the association uh, that articles of association 
to the oracles of So you have the Articles of Association, which was 1774. You have the Articles of Confederation that came in 1781-82. Um, you have the Declaration of Independence, of course, 1776. And then you have uh, the Constitution for the United States. Thank you. Those rules and regulations are unconstitutional and lacking due process. Waiting for powering. Late, lacking due process in that they are void for ambiguity in their failure to specify the statute's applicability to natural persons, otherwise depriving the same of fair notice as their construction by definition of the term of terms aptly identifies the applicability of such statutes to artificial or fictitious or fictional um, corporate corporations or corporate entities or persons, creatures of statues, and those by contracts employ an agent or representatives, department divisions, office, officers, and property of governments by not the natural person, but not the natural person, or American citizen, which actually should be a capital C, immune from such jurisdiction of legalism, legality, legalese. The common law is the real law, the supreme law of the land. The codes, rules, regulations, policy, and statutes are not the law. So when you say that we are above the law, that's a lie. For the because the above the law is common law, which is the real law, which is the supreme law of the land. Treaty law. Okay. Color of law. Let's look at it. Color of law. The appearance or simulates without the substance of legal right. State virtues, Belchler. We gave the definition because we realized that many may not be aware that there is a such thing as color of law. In fact, color of law is everything that we just made mention of. Codes, rules, regulations. Policies and statutes are not law. They are color of law. That would be what you are learning in any law classes today. Also, many may think Black's Law Dictionary is indicative, or indicative of a so-called black person because the name is Henry Campbell Black. When you look up color of law, you will find color of authority, color of office, and the definition of color itself, which is in appearance, similance, or singular crumbs, as distinguished from that which is real. Now, you know we, um, why we never were colored people. In the 101s, it tells us that Color means something that is stained, varnished, or dyed, which means it is hit on um, hides. This is hides or covers our true substance of the thing itself. Okay?
the right here, republic, because there's only one form of government according to the Constitution, and it's a republican form of government. There is no such thing as a democrat, democracy. There's no such thing. This is a lie in which that the government has expounded on. But there is no democracy. He says we're in a Republican form of government. So we look at the Republican characteristics versus Democratic characteristics. And Republican characteristics is a de jure government. A Democratic characteristics is a de facto government. We read this in class last week of a de jure government, which means a real government. And a de facto government is a pretending government in which that sees control of the de jure government. And that is what has happened. If you go and read Amorality, it says, in parentheses, Morocco. All right. Constitutional legislation. Unconstitutional legislation is the democratic. Article 3, judge, authorized, lawfully, private entity, barristers, pretending to possess judicial authority. That's what these judges are. Article 1, Article 2, judges, or private entity, barristers, pretending to possess judicial authority. Due process under the law. Bill of Attainer. The Bill of Attainer. You look that up. All right. Anyone have their Black Law Dictionary? Let's pull it up right quick and read Bill of Attainer. All right. Anybody got it? Hey, I'll say watch Shaiz. Yeah, say watch Shaiz. Uh, 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 criminal law. Say it again. Legislative acts, no matter what their form, that apply either to named individuals or to easily ascertainable members of a group in which a way as to inflict punishment on them with, without a judicial trial. United States versus Brown, 381 U.S. 437-448-4985-SCT. Okay. Next is lawful money. According to Article 1, Section 10 of the Constitution, lawful money is coined by Congress, not the Federal Reserve Bank. That shit from the Federal Reserve Bank, those FRN notes, that's counterfeit money. Representative government. Physical government sold to the highest bidder or briber. Representative government, once again, that's a Republican form of government, is representative government. They actually represent the will of the people. Nowadays, you have lobby, lobbyists, lobbyists 
The rich dad is nothing more than braggers and bitters. The rich dad go after those in government and offer them hundreds of thousands and millions of dollars. Now, lay your law versus feudal law. Feudal law is when you're getting taxed to death. Tax on the car you drive. Tax on the land you own. Bill of Rights, Libra Codes. All right, you still have the Black Law Dictionary, Brother Afan. If you can, please read the Libra Codes. Okay, let me find it. If you can't speak up a little bit louder, God, so we can make sure we can hear you and get it recorded. The labor code. Yep. The labor codes is spelled um, incorrectly here. Is L I E B E R labor codes, not L I B R A, as in the um, zodiac sign. Libra code, L I E B E R. All right, until you find that, I'm going to continue on. Honorable contracts, meaning. Both parties have to sign contracts in front of a notary. That's an honorable contract. Adhesive contract is only when there's one signature done in front of a notary. That's an adhesive contract. In other words, um, it's not an actual contract. You have real and actual compared to fake and prima facie. You have constitutional law, then you have color of law. You have separation of powers, then you have cross jurisdiction violations. Let's look at this. Go ahead. You say that was L I E? Yeah, L I E B E R. I don't see it in the six. Okay. Yeah, I don't think they have it in uh, the Black Law Court edition. Okay. Okay. Legal card of April the 24th. 1863, issued as General Order Number 100, Adjutant General's Office, 1863. Now, of course, that's the same year as um, the scene of the so-called slaves. All right? Well, this was, as well as also the assassination um, date, um, all the time around that time of Abraham Lincoln was an instruction signed by the United States President Abraham Lincoln to the Union forces of the United States during the American Civil War that dictated how s soldiers should conduct themselves in wartime. His name reflects its author, the German-American legal scholar and 
political philosopher Franz Lieber or Franz Lieber So they are laws of war, the Libra Code. Hey, can you see this? The laws of war, the Libra codes. No, I don't see it on his screen. Okay, hold on. Let me um go out then. Can you see me now? No. Hmm. No, can't see it. Dr. Eileen. Yes. I do have a document that's uh, the Libra Code General Orders 100, April 24th, 1863. Yeah, that's it. Washington, D.C., April 24, Instructions for Government of Armies of the United States in the field by the order of the Secretary of War. General Orders 100. Right. What about now? Can you see it? Yes. Yes. All right. So right here, this is Francis Liber or Franz Liber. The Libra Codes or General Orders 100, as stated by um, Brother Afan, it says was issued by President Abraham Lincoln in April 1863. The Libra Codes were intended to govern the conduct of soldiers during the Civil War and to protect the rights of both civilians and soldiers. Many of the individual laws of war outlined in the Libra Codes specifically outline how the United States government um, expected prisoners of war to be treated. After the Civil War, the Libra Codes were used as the basics for around 1,000 military tribunals, including the trial of Henry Ritz. List below specific laws of war, laws of war in the Libra Codes that address treatment of prisoners of war. Now, understand that you and I technically are prisoners of war. All right, so, a prisoner of war is subject to no punishment for being a public enemy, nor is any revenge wrecked upon him by the int intentional infliction of any suffering or disgrace by cruel punishment, want of food, by mutilation, death, or any other barity, um, the bar barity, the barity. Fifty eight. The law of nations know no distinctions of color, and if any any enemy of the United States shall enslave or sell any captive person of their army, it would be a case for severe retaliation. For the severest retaliation. 75. Prisoners of war are subject to confinement and imprisonment, such as many are be deemed necessary as, um, on account of their safety. But they are to be subject to no other international suffering or dignity, indignity. 
7-6. Prisons of war shall be fed upon plain and wholesome food whenever practicable and treated with humility. All right. 77. A prisoner of war who escapes may be shot or otherwise killed in this fight, but neither death nor any other punishment shall be inflicted upon him simply for the attempt to escape, which the law of war does not consider a crime. 79. Every captive wounded enemy shall be medically Truly, according to the absolute the ability of the medical staff. All right, so that's just so we actually are still under the legal codes to this very day. Ever since 1821, you can look that up. You've been under martial law, and Congress, the real Congress, was never called back into session. All right, we have our event coming up. I want to say this um, before I continue on. A United Washington Indigenous Peoples Weekend. Um, we have that coming up Friday, Saturday, and Sunday of June 17th, 18th, and 19th, 2022. So that's coming up in two months, two and a half months. All right. Want well, to make sure that y'all know. We love to see all the nationals here, as well as chiefs. All right, so let's look at the state of Delaware. This is not a statement of good standing. Now, what is this statement talking about about good standing? Well, federal number, or uh, file number, excuse me, 0325720, incorporation date, formation date, June 12, 1933. Or July, excuse me, July 12, 1933. Entity name is the Internal Revenue Tax and Audit Service. So they themselves are in good standing, the Internal Revenue System. <laughs> and that's all of the corporations are filed within the so-called state of Delaware because Delaware is the first said state. What kind is corporation? General Domestic State. All right, inactive agent account. Address of the state, towns and buildings. City, Dover, County, Kent, State, Delaware. So well, let's look at the House of Representatives. United States also traded as the Office of Law Revision Council. Once again, Congress is never called back in session, the real Congress. The Assembly, the Congress Assembly was never called back in the session, 1821. Come on. Yes. 
excuse me, 1871. We never called back into session right after the um, Civil War and after the passing of the 14th Amendment, which was 1868. So they are trading as the Office of Law Revision Council. And where is it filed at? In Delaware. This is Dunn and Bradstreet Credibility Corporation. Let's look at the Federal Reserve Association. This is operating as an entity type that is non-profit or religious. The Federal Reserve is operating as a non-profit religious entity. And it's filed where? In Delaware. It's filed in Delaware. Isn't that something? That's kind of new. Huh? Yeah, that's kind of, uh, I, 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 I really didn't know that. I have okay. a question, too. Yes. I, I'm sorry. Go ahead, though. You know what I was thinking? Since you want to incorporate as a religious organization, we can easily say it's against my religion to affiliate with you. We Muslim. You're right. And that's true. Because since... They have incorporated the Federal Reserve Association, which is the Federal Reserve Bank, as a non-profit or religious entity, then we can also. As a matter of fact, we as the Moorish Holy Temple of Sons of the World is non-profit, i.e. religious. So you're right. That would be very easy to do. But look at the incorporation date, October the 3rd, 1914. A year right after Prophet Noble Jali came on the scene with the Moorish Science Temple. Look at the Social Security Corporation, Department of Health, Education, and Welfare, Incorporated. They, they incorporated it in 11, November the 13th, 1989. Two days before the birth of my son. <laughs> so we know that we're working with corporations. Because look at this Entity Kind Corporation. Entity Kind Corporation. Entity Kind Corporation. Council. Office of Law Revision Council. Then in Brassley, in order to be a credibility corporation, they can only work with corporations. So the House of Representatives of the United States is a corporation. Corporation. All of these are corporations. So, this is the problem that we're having. Negroes are getting themselves mixed up, saying that they're corporations, that they're U.S. citizens. They're missing the point that the 14th Amendment was never fully ratified. 
I had a Negro to try to go um, at me recently. And I can't say he's a Moor, so we'll say a dirty Moor, as Prophet Nebuchadnezzar Dralee would say. I just simply say a Negro, because he don't deserve the title Moor. He don't deserve the nationality of a Moor. But he don't get at me. He's going to get at um, Sabir and, and you know, several other some out, um, solvent citizens. Number one, I am sovereign. I'm an actual prince. So prince is sovereign, which is the principal chief in our case. And then a citizen, a citizen of what? Citizen, a Washington citizen. But not a U.S. citizen. So you can say I'm a sovereign citizen if you're saying that I'm Washington. But I can never be a citizen of the United States and privileges don't supersede the right. So if you have a social security card, if you have a birth certificate, if you have a driver's license, those are privileges. Those are not rights. How the hell do a privilege make you a citizen? United States citizen? In fact, there is no such thing. Because it's a corporation. <laughs> you can be a United States corporation, and that's what they list you as. That's why your name is on caps. On your social security card, on your birth certificate, on your driver's license, on your passport, etc., etc. Name is on all caps because they can only deal with corporations. And if that's over a citizen, then so be it. Prove to me that I'm a United States citizen. You can't. They couldn't prove it in court when we brought up the issue of the Dred Scott case decision. My name is Joe Scott. I sued the United States to free myself and my family, the case that broke America and led to the Civil War. Well, it's not the only case that led to that. It was the uprising of the Yamasee, and I had a uh, pale European to call today and say that we was culture vultures for attaching ourselves to our Native American heritage, to our indigenous aboriginal heritage. It said that the Yamases, that the death of the Yamases of their existence, them being extinct, happened long before all of this. Well, hold up. Mm, that's interesting. Because there's a town in South Carolina that's called Yamasee. And the Yamasee was fighting all the way up until 1858. If you remember, I've done classes on this. So, how in the hell were the Yamasee extinct when they were still whooping ass up to 1858? And that is really what led to them having to free the so-called Negroes. was because the native Negroes was fighting on our behalf of the African Negroes. I'm going to say that again. The native Negroes, the indigenous Aboriginal Americans, was fighting on behalf of the African Negroes who came from Africa just 400 years ago. How you know this is because the Gamaseas and the Seminoles' history 
tells us of this. Go and do the research. But these pale Europeans posing as, as we call them, the fake-ass $5 Indians, posing as Native Americans, talking about they got uh, 16th uh, um, percentage of Native American. <laughs> if that's the case, I have more than that. Therefore, I should be recognized as a Native American. And I have four times that amount. When a Centurion priest came from out of Cuba up to our apartment back in 2000, he was amazed with all of the Native American ancestry that was there on the spiritual plane, on the astral plane. He said he had never seen this many Native Americans when he believed and thought that we was African. Why did we not have a lot of African ancestry there as opposed to Native American? That's because nearly half of our ancestry is Native American, is indigenous Aboriginal. The other half you can trace to the black Europeans you can trace to the so-called black Africans and others indigenous people around the world. Because there's blacks in Europe that are indigenous. There's blacks in Australia, of course, they're called aborigines, that are indigenous. There's blacks in Africa, of course, <laughs> that are indigenous. And his blacks, so-called, here in America, the Negroes here in America, the American Negro, as they just called us this 30 to 50 years ago. That's what we were referred to as, American Negroes. And then Jesse Jackass took it upon himself 30 years ago to change the name to African American. And that became the word in which that we wanted to use. However, by doing so, that disqualify and disconnects us as far as our American heritage. It makes it secondary and not primary. When we was called American Negroes, that made our ancestry primarily American. Negro was the second part. So actually, I like American Negro better than I do African American, personally. But it was the Yamases in which that, and the Seminoles in which that cause of their uprising in the South and the freeing of our people is what caused them to have to release the remaining of um, the remaining POWs. This is what happened. And the indigenous Aboriginal people that was already here, eighty five percent of us, as the Empress already told us in her book, Return of the Ancient Ones, and the 15% of which that was in slavery, we mixed in with each other. And this is why they refer to us as colored.
The United States Article 1, Section 2, Article 1, there's a legislative branch. Section 2, the House. The House of Representatives and direct tax shall be appropriate, appropriate, apportioned among the several states which may be included within this union according to their respective numbers which shall be determined by adding to the whole number of free persons including those bound to service for ter a term of years and excluding Indians not taxed and three-fourths persons so Indians and three-fourths persons which is ie you and I were not supposed to be taxed this was according to the organic Constitution of 1789 to 1791. The previous sentence in parentheses was modified by the 14th Amendment, Section 2. Oh no, we have to get the Indians and the Negroes to pay us some taxes, even though it's their land. <laughs> Well, no, get the Indian Negroes to pay some taxes. <laughs> right, right. You gotta get them to pay taxes. Shit. You know, you know, like the corporation is going down. <laughs> uh, funny. <laughs> so, for the United States, America. It states that we Indians and those of African descent, Negroes, and those actually. Uh, we're not African descent. Those who, that was American descent. All right. Once again, the American Negroes are classified as three fifths of a human being, thus subhuman. This is a Masonic code, which means one sight and hearing. All right. Listening, deaf, dumb, and blind must be returned to be a five fifth or one whole person again. So when you say that someone is deaf, dumb, and blind. We're saying that their sight, hearing, and their talking or speak or speaking abilities were taken from them. So thus, they are deaf, dumb, and blind. 85% of the masses are deaf, dumb, and blind. Brother Dawood, alayhi salam upon him, he just passed the godfather of this metaphysical shit. He says that 99% of the people are deaf, dumb, and blind. And only 1% are woke. And I can see that. Because I've worked with many Negroes claiming to be not deaf, dumb, and blind. And they really are deaf, dumb, and blind. They come into this movement, conscious movement, with the same Christian bullshit that they claim that they was running from. Coming into it with the same nonsense. They don't know how that happens because they never read the whole damn Bible. My question is, when they come into this movement and they are Christians, how can that really fit with this movement, though? <laughs> good question, Brother L. That's a good question. How can you fit that? I mean, okay, the Christians are, are really, uh, back in the day, what did they say, Christians? Uh, Christians or mean you were European or modern Europeans, whatever. Right now, I don't come. I don't mind if they come in uh, with the signs of the Egyptian, Kemetic, Tamarian philosophy of Kares and me. Kares and me is the real Christianity. Kares and me right. means the mummified body of Osiris, which that has awoken from out of the swaddling clothing, which is the same thing that Jesus was put in. Um, when he was said also in the sepulchre in the tomb and he raised three days from the dead uh, symbolizes the meta uh, uh, the, the meta uh, morphosis from a caterpillar into a uh, butterfly now that would be more more suitable right well that's what it is you're supposed to understand the science of the flesh this flesh is the uh, the swaddling clothing and you are metamorphosizing your mind, your heart, your sexual energy towards the oneness of God. Once again, your mind, your heart, and your sexual energy. All three are supposed to be modified towards 
God towards Allah, towards Christ consciousness, towards Melchizedek, towards Ra, towards Buddha. Whatever term or name that you want to give this higher entity of yourself, your personal Lord and Savior, that's where these energies are supposed to be headed towards, moved towards. And that is Islamism. Right, and that's Islamism. Old time religion. The everlasting gospel. All right. So right here it says the three fifth clause of the United States Constitution declares the slave name black, Negroes, and colored person or people as identification and marks of the United States properties. So as long as we use blacks, Negroes, and colored peoples or colored persons, then that is marks and identification of the United States properties. We are the United States property. We are still their slaves. This is why they don't want to let the slaves go. So for any slave that get the hell off the plantation, Oh, that's the sovereign citizen. Now they try to put, but yet when you get to court, case dropped. Oh, when you get in front of a police and you um, state that you're not an average Negro and you know your rights, oh, um, warning ticket. So if this so-called information is bullshit, why fold in court? Why fold on the street? Oh, this shit is real. But they don't want you to know that it's real. They want you to stay black, Negroes, and colored. Just like this thick-ass right. European posing as a Native American called, to, called today trying to tell you that we was culture vultures. Culture vultures. Dude, uh, we're not, um, uh, uh, what, what's that dude name that be interviewing all the rappers and, and um, entertainers and don't pay him for shit? Vlad. <laughs> Vlad TV. We're not Vlad the Impeller. <laughs> you know who Vlad, Vlad the Impeller is? Vlad the Impeller is Dracula. <laughs> which most of the presidents are descended from. Ninety-nine percent of the so-called presidents are descended from Dracula, from Vlad the Impeller. <laughs> and if you got over 60 percent, <laughs> actually over 50 percent of European blood, <laughs> And you trace your ancestry back to Vlad the Impeller, then there's nothing that you can say. <laughs> so you just fucked, huh? <laughs> you might as well get impaled. Nah, no, I'm just joking. <laughs> <laughs> but the 13th Amendment abolishes these slave labels, allegedly, and their slave masters, thus making the 14th and 15th. Amendments as ex post facto law to the 13th Amendment. All 14th Amendment citizens, including unproclaimed and unrecognized Moors of Mexico, Moorish American, American sovereigns, are property of corporate United States of America. So they're claiming to be 14th Amendment citizens. Might as well. This Masonic code goes back to the three monkeys. See no evil, speak no evil, hear no evil. And oftentimes a monkey is seen with a fez or tall bush on his head, clapping cymbals. You've seen that before. It is, is all of a form of Shriner Masonic mockery. Because who put out these monkeys clapping these goddamn cymbals? It's the Sh Masonic Shriners. Right or wrong. So at the 32nd, 33rd degree, which now they take you at the 3rd degree, master level, 
and says he may see a person is able to join the shrine though. Where it says and say assalamu alaikum, wa alaikum assalam, etc. There is actually only two senses oftentimes and it's, if a person is deaf then they're also mute. Meaning that they cannot speak and speak or speak very well. And I have to learn and have to learn sign language to express oneself. All right. So when you look up notes, going is also the word used in masonry in particular by the Jews, Jewish people, who is also faking the funk. They are converts after 740 AD into the, after the burning of Jerusalem into Judaism. They're not the original Hebrews and Israelites. So here you have someone else stealing our birthright. So not only have they stolen our birthright as being indigenous Aboriginal Americans, they have stolen our birthright as being Jewish Hebrew Israelites. Funny how these two groups who are mostly pale Trying to say that we're not who we say that we are, but yet genetics and DNA states otherwise. So can they call you un American? Can they call you anti Semitic? Really? I'm, that'll mean I'm anti myself. And thank you! Exactly. So you can't be so you can't be un American because you are the only real American. And you can't be anti Semitic when you are the only Semitic. Because Semitic or Shemitic comes down to a particular DNA. And only so called black people have this DNA. And that's E one B one A. These are one of the 12 tribes of Israel. Me personally, I have mostly Levite priests. I'm a Leviticus priest. So, right here, Gohim is also the word used in masonry referring to the uninitiated. So, not only is it Jewish, it is saying that it is someone who is uninitiated. So we go to Black's Law Dictionary, Deluxe, Fourth Edition, and, and this is a saying in which that was given to me by John McCoy, brother who used to come to my store, um, my, uh, my, uh, my wife and my store in uh, Fayetteville, North Carolina. And it says, there is nothing worse than a slave with an, uh, with an ego. And I thought that shit was so profound, and I was just rolling, like, like, God damn, that shit is profound. Like, what? There's nothing worse than a slave with an ego. And this is what we see with these Negroes who want to be Negro, black, and colored. They are the worst slaves, and they have the biggest egos. They can't rel relinquish that ego of being called Negro, black, and colored, in the particular black. They don't want to let that go. So we look at slave, a person who is wholly subject to the will of another, one who has no freedom of action, but whose person and services are wholly under the control of another. Do we make our own food? Manufacturing companies? Products of food from out of the, our yards? Out of our on our land, if we're not doing that, then we're still subjugated to someone else's food supply. Is the sup uh, food supply local? If not, then we're still subjugated to someone's shipping um, and handling charges and taxes. Do we manufacture our own cars? If not, then we're still subject to Ford, Chrysler, etc., etc. 
They are our masters. And they control society. This is the same thing with Bill Gates. His um, ownership or on the, sit on the board of, of Pfizer, which controls the way. is one of the major controls out of the three, four, some say, of the vaccine, vaccination. Coincidence that he just said recently, once again, that it's going to be another pandemic. And this one is going to be associated with COVID. I'll tell you what it's going to be situ- um, uh, 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 um, situated with, associated with, it's going to be the smallpox. In fact, it's going to be called monkeypox. But this one is only going to last six months, not two years. How I know because I already wrote an article about this shit in 2002, 20 years ago. In Frontline Magazine, that this is what they was planning. 20 years ago, I was telling people about this shit. And this is how they're going to have to get people vaccinated, rest of the people vaccinated, as well as those in which that um, now, once again, tracking system, RFID chip, Metal technology, all of the good shit that we've been talking about for the last 20 years and more. Yeah, they've been trying to tell you that in the movie. movie. They show yeah. the theaters. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And they showed you about this nanotechnology. What kills it? Sound. Magnets destabilize it. This is what you see in the movie Spider Man when this black substance, this melanated substance, which is symbolic to actually nanotechnology, changes the behavior of the of the individual. It was on Peter Parker when the bell rung. He had it had to come off. So sound is a destabilizer. This is where they have to have frequencies on, such as the five G, in order to keep it intact. But there's no frequency, no sound better than your own voice to your body. <laughs> Question, Doctor Lee. Yes. Do you think that uh, raising your Kundalini energy can basically kill it? Yeah, frequencies such as um, utilizing a frequency machine um, can be utilized. Uh, frequencies of your own voice, using your own voice. Uh, frequencies such as um, channeling chi, prana, or key energy through the top of your head, down into your body via your hands, called Reiki or pranic healing. So utilizing fifth dimensional energy to overpower anything that could be fourth or third dimensional. Because the energy zone, I'm talking about the fifth dimensional. And they have not tapped into fifth dimensional energy as of yet. So it says here, so the master may sell and dispose of his person, of his industry, and of his labor without being able to do without him being able to do anything, have anything, or acquire anything. But what must belong to his master? Haven't you heard lately 
that the billionaires have stated based on the fact that they can control government that um, as we move into this new reset that the people are not going to own anything and they're going to be happy. Have you heard that? Yep. Yeah, I heard it. Yeah. So that means that you're still a slave. That means they're going to control what it says right here once again without being able to do anything. You ain't going to be able to travel out the country. Why? Because they control that. And if you don't get the goddamn shot or get these damn pills with these nanobot technology, whatever it is that you got to do, you better do it. This is their sentiment. So you're not going to have the right to have anything or acquire anything unless we say so. Therefore, these bastard billionaires are saying you're not going to control and own anything and you're going to be happy. You're not going to own anything and you're going to be happy. And you don't believe that this is what is going on and being said by these so-called bastard billionaires? You check that shit out. It's been all over the news for the last six months at least. Chattel. Chattel or chattel. Chattel sounds a whole lot better when it's French chattel. But the word chattel is cattle. The same is French though, chattel. You know, an article of personal property, any species of property. Remember, make what blacks and colors is property. So any species of property, not amounting to a fee, a freehold, or fee in land. So you're not. So so the word Negro, black and color is not attached to land, and thus you're not free. You're a chattel. You're a slave. The term chattels is a more comprehensive one than goods, as it includes animated as well as inanimated objects or property. What? Animated property? Who's animated property? Oh, Negroes, Blacks, and Coloreds. They are animated property. Come here, nigga. Black's Law, first edition. Mm. We have chattel mortgage, and a mortgage is a dead pledge. So it, it is a property, a dead property pre pledge. <laughs> chattel papers, your birth certificate, that's not for all caps, is, chattel, is a chattel paper. Chattel paper means a record or records that evidence both a monetary obligation. On the bottom of your birth certificate, it says Midwest Bank Note Company. That is a bond. Your birth certificate is a bond in which that shows that you are a cattle or chattel. Negro, black, and colored, which means that you are dead in the eyes of the law. Means that you are inanimated as well as animated property. It doesn't matter. Chattel includes both in definition, as you see here, includes animated as well as inanimated property. So whether you're claiming to be animated, or oh, I'm alive, like Pinocchio. I'm a living boy. I'm alive. But you still would. Negro, black, and colored, Negro. <laughs> still would. Or if you say that you're inanimated property because you civilly dead in law, that's a civically dead person in law is an in inanimated property. So once again, if you say that you're nickel black and colored, then you are dead in law. So no matter which definition that you say, whether you're animated or inanimated, you still is chattel or chattel, chattel property. The birth certificate and the social security card are forms of chattel paper. Before in slavery, some of our ancestors were branded. Now we are tracked and tagged. 
Most carry these documents with us at all times with no superior claim or lien on them. How do you get a superior claim of lien on your birth certificate, social security card, your passport, etc., etc.? You had to do a UCC1 financial statement and a UCC addendum. Security agreement, private agreement, whole harmless indemnity clause agreement. A list of property and collateral listing, as it is called. Bond for discharge. Private bond set off. Negative overtment. Charge back. Oh, shit. This is how you get superior claim of lien on these objects that state that you are nigger, black, and colored, that you are tagged and, and tracked. The birth certificate and the social security card are probably the best gifts once you do that, that could have give, been given to you because there's a trust account that's attached to them that you're now able to discharge. Once you claim, superior claim and lien on these documents, once you have it, it's the best gift that they could have gave you. Because now you can discharge your debt in 30 days afterwards once you, were sent, once you send them to the United States Treasury, Treasurer, um, Treasury, United States um, Secretary of Treasury who is now Janet Yellen. So y'all need to be yelling at her right now. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> y'all need to be yelling at Janet Yellen. <laughs> and let your paperwork do the talking. So, not only are your birth certificate and social security cards chattel paper if you don't have a spirit claim lean on them, all right. They're also warehouse receipt. A receipt issued by a person a Bailey engaged in business of storing goods for hire. UCC 1-201. Warehouse receipt constitutes a document of title under the Uniform Commercial Code, which evidence that the person in possession of the document is entitled to receive, hold, dispose of the document and the goods it covers. UCC 1-201. A warehouse receipt may be a negotiable instrument. So what is the birth certificate? The birth certificate is a negotiable instrument, a bond, that can be utilized to discharge debt. So you would have to get several of your loan forms from the state in which that you, was dom that you domiciled and that you was conceived in, and particularly where you was conceived in. So I was conceived in New York State. Not the state of New York, but in New York State, there's a difference. One has a Republican form, one has a Democratic form of government. State of New York is a Democratic form of government, which means a de facto form of government. While New York State, Republic in particular, is known as a Republican form of government. And Judge Kenney was mistaken. We was part of at least five states. New York was one of them. North Carolina was one of them. In the South and in the North, we were citizens, actual citizens. This is where Prophet Muhammad Ali was talking about. USA, in which that is on the nationality cards. USA, not U.S. citizens. There's a difference. United States of America symbolizes the Republican form of government, in particular the states in which they had sovereignty. This isn't being told to us properly. There's a lot of newcomers coming into this information, and they don't know how to explain this information. So they go off running off, you know, saying that we citizens and, and never explain the differences in that so-called citizenship. And this can be a very um, interesting dilemma. A warehouse receipt or other documents title is negotiable. If by its terms the goods are to be delivered to bearer or to the order of the main person or we recognize an overseas trade if, we run, if it runs to a main person or signs. All right? Warehouse receipts. Goods. Once again, chattel is more comprehensive one than goods. So let's look at the definition of goods. Goods means all things that are movable. When social 
when security interests attaches. That includes what? The unborn young of animals. I'm going to say that again. The unborn young of animals. So when the child, this is why they want to get you into the hospitals to get that contract with you to bring forth the child because it's unborn at that time. It's a young born, young of animal. The term also includes a computer program embedded in goods or any, hold up, computer program embedded in goods. What did they say was inside of the vaccines which that was given? Oh, they said that it came with patent numbers. <laughs> yep, at number six zero six zero six. Uh oh, six six six. Wow. Terms also include a computer program. All right, now. Nah. Okay. In goods, so your young unborn young of animals is goods, which means your babies, your children, because they say, "Oh, man is an animal." Drop no, that anger yet. No, he has an animalistic nature, which symbolizes the the four lower chakras. However, he has two higher chakras in which that makes him beyond human. In fact, a god, a goddess, part of the meta, the meta rules. And any supporting information provided in connection with the transaction related to the program. Hold on, once again, any support and information provided in connection with the transaction relating to the program. And if the program is associated with the goods in such a manner that it is customarily considered part of the goods. So, these Negroes who got the chip, these Negroes, blacks and colors who got the chip, had just made themselves goods. They already were slaves. To begin with, because of the artificial labels, but now they are goods. Oh, damn. I didn't put two and two together yet. Oh, my God. It's all right. I I got you. I got you. Oh, my God. So are they locked in? Yes, they're locked in. They're goods. Big time. They're goods. Big time. A person acquires a right to use the program in connection with the goods. Well, hold up. By becoming the owner of the goods? Is it? Hold up. So who's the owner of the goods? Oh, Bill Gates. He's one of the owners of the goods. Because he did Pfizer. Pfizer president stepped down. Well, who, who was on the board? Bill Gates. You don't believe me? Check it out. Find out who sit on the boards of Pfizer. Bill Gates. <laughs> yeah, got them lock, stock, and barrel. Sure do. And they wanted at least 70%. They say, they say that it's only 61% of the people that has been inoculated with at least one of the patterns. Vaccine. They say they wanted up to over 70%. So they get nine more percent to go. <laughs> and the second epi- um, epidemic, pan- pandemic, pandemic, in which that Bill Gates is talking about is going to get that other nine percent. <laughs> yes. So it doesn't matter how many you got. So you got that first one, you're locked in. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's the point. Damn, my whole family got that stuff, man. Stop me. Yeah, it says, by, by becoming the owner of the goods, a person acquires a right to use the program in connection with the goods. What is the program? The program is a vaccination. Yep. That's the truth. The term does not include a computer program embedded in goods that consists solely of the medium in which that the program is embedded. It says the term also does not include accounts, shadow papers, commercial court claims, um, deposit um, accounts, documents, general intangible, um, um, intangible um, instruments, investment property, letters of credit rights, letters of credit, money, or oil, gas, or any other mineral before extraction. 
UCC 9-102, a term of variable content and meaning, all things which are movable at the time of identification to the contract for sale. Investment securities and things in action also include the young born young of animals. Okay, let's go down further. Notes, all things that are movable. Is your physical body movable? Oh, yes. Equals newborn children. At the time the security interest attaches, equals birth. In execution, registration of the birth documents, certificate, identification to the contract, equals newborns, footprints, and informers, which the number is the informer, Security contract equals birth certificate. Things in action equals human citizens. Newborn babies. Unborn, unborn young animals equals human citizens. Over to Strong's concordance in Gohim. You know, Gohim equals animals. According to the Jewish encyclopedia and Gentiles, above a Gentile is a beast. See? Film warehouse receipt identification of goods, Gentile and Gohan. Gentile is your genitals. Someone who thinks with their genitals, think with their lower nature. Gohan, Gohan, Grace. Often disparaging, it says a non Jewish person. It says you are more, you are a Hebrew, you are Israelite, that means that you're not a Gentile. Also, British, Hebrew, boy, person, people, non Jew. Bohem, a foreign nation, hence a Gentile. Also, a troop of animals or a flight of locusts. Gentiles, heathens, nation, people. The new sort of exhaustive concordance of the Bible. Literally, boy means nation. But also, Jewish slain the cattle. Uh oh, Chateau. Goyim and Chateau and cattle are the same words, animals. And I just showed you that Negro Blacks and Colored is Chateau. That means they are considered animals. What? Unborn animals. Unborn Hold up, let's look at it again. Unborn young of animals equals human fetuses. Equals human fetuses. Unborn young of animals equals human fetuses. Things in action equals human fetuses. Newborn babies equals human fetuses. So right here. Look at Monster, a human being by birth, but in some parts resembling a lower animal. So if you have a lower self, that is the lower animal. That is the monster. Any person who's following their lower self can become a monster. And a monster has no inheritable blood. It cannot be heir to any land. This is Battle King Lord Dictionary 1930. In prodigious birth. Is you hey, can somebody mute their phone? Yes. Somebody mute their phone, huh? Man, hold on, brother. Let me go get to it. All right. Thank you. All right. So, right here, a monster has no inheritable blood and cannot be heir to any land. A prodigious birth, a human birth, or offspring not having the shape of mankind, which cannot be heir to any land, albeit to brought forth in marriage. Howbeit is brought forth in marriage. So a monster is can be brought forth in marriage. I'm going to say that again. A monster can be brought forth in marriage. 
So that means that you have to be very careful about who you share DNA with. That's a code. That's a key. Be careful about who you share DNA with. Go back and watch the videos when I talk about who's who on planet Earth. I did it about a month ago. You got about 20,000 views on it. Go back and check it out. And stay specifically, I, I give you all the keys of figuring out who's who on planet Earth. The epistemic gland, the berry berry gland. The gills. All these things show who you're dealing with on planet Earth. The show of teeth. The show of teeth in particular show that you have indigenous ancestry. So if you check the four upper teeth and the four bottom teeth that are your front teeth, and it is shaped like a shovel, then that means that you have Native American ancestry. These are all things in which that Europeans don't have that I just told you the science of. So they say I that they, so, they, one, so they say that they are if they are claiming to be indigenous. Let me see your upper four teeth. Let me see your lower four teeth. If they're not shovel teeth and they just straight or cross, then you're not indigenous to this land mass. You don't have the epiphany gland. You don't have the berry gland. You're not indigenous to this land mass, and you don't have an extraterrestrial connection. So when you talking about, so when they talking about on ancient, um, um, uh, uh, ancient aliens, talking about the um, alien group, the um, pyramids. Oh, that's true. But that was us. <laughs> They're just not telling you that is you. The ones who have these particular markings. All the Anunnakians, all the Syrians, all the reptilians. Well, we're not the planet of the apes. They belong to someone else. You can look at their lips and tell who the apes are. Yeah. You can look at their hands. As I showed, um, the difference between um, yeah. hands and human hands. Let me look at your palm of your hand. Oh, you got a monkey hand. You got plenty of Neanderthal in you. That means your ancestry had to have more than 4% and to 10% Neanderthal. Most Negroes have less than 1% Neanderthal. So therefore, we got human hands, M not that monkey crease. So I go into detail about who's on planet Earth and how to basically figure out your mate. And these are the things that we have to start going by, especially as righteous on people, especially as conscious people. All of us make mistakes. We're not the, the greatest at trying to figure out everything. You know, but we have to figure out um, the most important things about life so that we can move forward and, and make sure that, you know, we got children in which that understand who they really are. So right here says monster, once again, a human being by birth, but in some parts resembling a lower animal. That's deep. A human being by birth, but resembling a lower animal. Resembling a lower animal. All right? 
So let's look down here at Black's Law Dictionary, fourth edition of defines free. Because we already defined a slave free means not subject to legal constraints of others or to another. Also having power to follow dictates of own will, not subject to the dominion of other. Not compelled to involuntary servitude. According to the Constitution, involuntary servitude has to do with what? Imprisonment. When a person is in prison, that is involuntary servitude. According to the Constitution, there is no slavery unless it's involuntary servitude. In other words, imprisonment. I wonder why this 65% of our people is in prison <laughs> or on probation. Or well, what's the other P word? Okay. Um, parole. Parole. Thank you. Exactly. So they're either on parole, probation, or prison. You don't want to be down with PPP. <laughs> okay. Because that is a voluntary servitude. Enjoying full civil rights is how you're being free. Well, hold up. If Martin Luther King was fighting for civil rights, then we didn't have enjoyment or enjoying in full civil rights. Because he was fighting for civil rights. So that means that we was not free. And how can you be free if you fight for civil rights? And Martin Luther King was fighting for civil rights. Matter of fact, he's the civil rights leader of all times. <laughs> right or wrong. So, if you look at what Malcolm X, El Haj Malik El Shabazz stated, he stated otherwise. He said you cannot have civil rights unless you are first recognized as a human being. And if you go to natural person, it states in the definition of Black's Law 7th edition that a natural person is someone who is indigenous. So that means that you have the right in order to recognize yourself as such. So by recognizing yourself as a natural person, automatically you are a so-called, and you don't really know what human being, because remember, we showed you what human being means. It means a monster. So that definition is not correlating to natural person. The opposite of a natural person is an artificial person, i.e. a corporation, i.e. someone who is civilly Oh, oh, simply dead. So is motus, motus. You don't want to be simply motus. You want to enjoy full civic rights. And the only way to do that is by declaring your nationality, stating that you are a natural person, that you are indigenous. Thus, you're not an artificial person. Thus, you're not under the labeling, the false labeling of Negro, Black, and Colored. Prominent, prominent under the word freedom is self-determination. So we must turn back to self-determination. That is within the definitions of indigenous. Why do you think they had to fake and do this damn pandemic? It because the morals was, there's too many of us now. Too many of our people are becoming interested in it. Too many damn debates. We have won and he defeated the nonsense of the RBG and others who want to call themselves blacks, Negroes, and colleagues. That shit ain't making no sense no more. This African American shit ain't making no sense no more. It's not making any sense. More makes sense. Perfect sense. Right. So they had, to, they had to do that pandemic. They had no choice. They're talking about a reset. They, they, yeah, they had to move towards a reset and everything. Because the Moors are waking up. And their whole Masonic, Shriner, pale European 
setup is based on never allowing the Moors to rise again. That's the whole plan. And what do we see with the rise of the Moors? What happened with Brother Jamal? Because he, because they called themselves the rise of the Moors. They had to take them down. Notice that during the same time as the pandemic, that was planned, y'all. All right, right here, freedom is self determination. According to the Declaration of the Rights of Indigenous People, we as Indigenous people have the right to self-determination, self-government, self-autonomy, autonomy, absence of restraint, and the power of acting in the character of a moral personality, according to the dictates of the will, without other check, hindrance, or prohibition than such as may be imposed by just and necessary laws and the duties of social life. No, you can't just go out and kill somebody just because uh, they went in front of you um, in their car. Roll rage. That's unjust. What's your obligation and the duty of social life? We're not saying that you need to run the red light. However, common sense will tell you that if there's no cars coming either way and you need to get to your house in an emergency manner, common sense will dictate that you need to run it and get to your house. Or are you going to sit there for two to five minutes waiting for the shit to change? And there's no cars coming from either direction. And the red light becomes just like a stop sign. You stop, look both directions, keep on. So even in these types of events, you have to use your common sense. You don't want to harm anyone. Because that's still is biblical. Do it to others as others have them to do doing to you. You don't want to harm anyone. But you want to be able to use your common sense too at the same time. That's being free. You're utilizing common sense. A slave person has no common sense. Because everything is about master. <clears throat> Are we sick boss? Y'all y'all seen that shit um in the movie um um the jungle yeah. um, jungle nerve. in the movie Jungle Samuel Jackson played the damn best oh we sick boss role ever he should have won a goddamn Academy Award for that shit <laughs> okay <laughs> he should have won a pretty good job for that. that's how he did a pretty good job on that. No, he did. I ain't gonna lie to you. Good God, I was like, I hell, I wouldn't stand up and clap for him. <laughs> <laughs> He's definitely a good actor. Definitely an actor. Damn good job. Didn't he? <laughs> well, who I clapped for the most was Jungle himself. <laughs> Jamie, Jamie Foxx in a hell of a role. Now he should have won a goddamn Academy Award. Yes. Best damn actor, and then um, St. Jackson should have won Best Assistant Actor. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, support, Best Supportive Actor. Yeah. Right, right, Best Supporting Actor. Yeah, that's it. Thanks, thank you, Brother Al. Yeah, that's it. Oh, <laughs> uh, uh, yeah. I'm going to say me just like that, Brother, for real, man. Right? Oh, man. He's, he's, oh, he's acting. This is a movie. I said, oh, <laughs> so, you got to remember now. You know, get it together. All right. <laughs> right. 
So we look at the word Negro in Black's Law Dictionary and it says the word Negro means a black man. There it is. So Negro means a black man. One descended from the African race. So Negro, black, African. That's a Negro. Once again, Negro, black, African. That's a Negro. Does not commonly include a mulatto. The Felix versus State, Alabama. But the laws of the different states are not uniform in this respect. And some including in the description Negro, one who has one-eighth or more of African blood. So how can they have someone who was one-sixteenth be a Native American? <laughs> when they say in here that someone who is one-eighth or more of African blood is a Negro. How did they know that then? They didn't have no damn DNA test during this time period. There's no goddamn uh, uh, Ancestry.com. There's no African Ancestry.com. There's no Living DNA.com. There's no MyHeritage.com. So how did they know who the hell is one eighth or more of African blood? Oh, they looked at you. And if you look like a nigga, we prosecuted you like a nigga. Oh my God, that's perfect. <laughs> Term Negro, meaning, this is, I'm just telling you, you know, it's funny, but I, but I mean, I, I'd rather laugh than cry. <laughs> All right, and some of this shit is amusing because I'm like, how the hell did we damn fall for this shit and still falling for it? Exactly. It says term Negro means necessarily person of color, but not every person of color is Negro. Huh? Well, shit, when they racially profiling, they seem like they're Negroes. <laughs> how, can they not, how, how can a person of color not be a Negro, but yet be racially profiled by the police? Oh, I know how. If he got his nationality, in which that states that he's indigenous and not original, he's stating that he's not an African. He's stating that he's not a Negro. He's stating that he's not a black man. So thus, this is when the term Negro means necessarily person of color, but not every person of color is Negro. Get it? <laughs> right versus Gong Loom. Gong Loom. Now, the, the name Gong Loom, now you can, you know that that's um, Chinese. So what the hell is this uh, Rice versus Gong Loom, Mississippi? What Negro do you know named Gong Loom? So they use the case Rice versus Gong Loom. Now I know Gong Loom eats lots of rice. I've been to the Chinese restaurant. For rice versus gong loom? And they talking about Negroes? Why is Negro, black man, African race, mulatto, even in a scenario with gong loom? Mm. He's Chinese. <laughs> I'm just asking. But these are the cases in which that made this shit relevant. Mm, okay. Just, just giving y'all something to look at. Explore. Because cause a lot of this mess doesn't make any sense. So, here it is. So, black is an English word for the Latin word niger. The etymology of the word negro or negroi comes from Latin. Black in Spanish is negro. Now, in Mexico, my wife and I, in 2008, no, 2007, 2008, we went to Mexico for the first time. We was there for, I think, 10 to 12 days. Yeah. It was excellent. Um, we even um, posed next to a, um, a giant head of the of a Omex. All right, the famous one in which everybody um, can pull up um, of the Omex. There, there was an actual replica of this Omex head right there on the streets um, of um, Cancun. I loved it. 
and it was beautiful. Obviously, it was us. But as we was walking back to the hotel, we had uh, um, a Mexican brother just ask us, said, come here. I, I need to talk to you about something. So we ran over to him and talked to him. He was a Masonic brother. Didn't see it until after I saw his ring, masonry. So he asked us, he said, why do you believe, talking about our people, why do you all believe that Jesus, uh, 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 in Jesus' own story? And we said, oh, I know what you mean. You mean, why do we believe that Jesus is a white man? <laughs> oh, well, 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 really, when we know that Jesus symbolizes the sun and the 12 zodiac signs symbolizes the 12 disciples. He jumped like, what? Y'all know that? I said, yes, we know that. He said, do y'all? And I asked him, I said, do y'all know that? And he said, yes, we know that. Well, damn, y'all got the biggest damn Catholic church believers. If y'all know that, <laughs> you know. But once again, he was a Masonic brother. So he knew the higher information. And he told my wife and I, so, so I asked him, I said, well, what do you all call us in the States? I was expecting for him to call us Negroes. He said, oh, we call y'all Moreno. Morena. Now, y'all can ask my wife this. He said, That's we call y'all Moreno and Morena, not Moors. He called us Moors. Moreno and Morena is Moor. He did not call us Negroes. Because when you go to uh, by a computer on the box in Spanish, if it's a black computer, it says Negro. And it's not all cap. And it's not um, in the um, capital N either. But that is description. Black is a description, not an identity. And definitely not oh, yeah. a nationality. It's so okay, that's a crayon box. Right, right. So black exactly. person. Right, so black person where black is the description and person is identity, but person is not a nationality. Therefore, a black person, black man, black woman, etc., is not a nationality and should not be thought as such. And matter of fact, we are even told this in the Black Law Dictionary. Look up black person. It says, according in the Constitution and law, must be taken in its generic sense. It's generic as contradiction from white. It's a contradiction from white. And once again, what is this case? The same case that was for Negro is the same case for black person. And it says rice versus gung lu. Once again, Mississippi. What was Chinese doing? What was the day of Chinese doing in Mississippi about a case about a black person and Negro? <laughs> we need to look this up. <laughs> I'll tell you, I just looked it up. It's concerning uh, Chinese. Yes, it's Chinese. Uh, the 14th Amendment. Right. So they were trying to put the Chinese under the 14th Amendment and make them citizens by utilizing our scenario for them. But how can you? Because the Chinese come from China. Where does a black person come from? Blackie? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying, you know, Negro come from Negro land. No such land. It come from Colored Place. I mean, <laughs> where's that at? Where's Colored Place? Where's Negro Colored land? Place. Where's, where's Blackie at? <laughs> These words don't exist. So he had a nationality. So he can put he can really be put in the same category. So really, this is to define our position, as you can see here, Negro and Black person. That was to define our position, not a Chinese. Gong Loon. rice versus Gong Loon. and then I mean, I mean, I mean, think about just that rice versus Gong Loon. <laughs> <laughs> Don't that, that that is so funny shit. Well, I mean, that makes perfect sense. Though, that's a comedy. That's a comedy skit right there for real. Mm -hmm. It makes sense it though because funny. you know there was a stone Bible in Eastern or Western Asia, and um, it was predicting that there will be a black Buddha that will rise up in the West in fifty right. hours, 
and they have 50 towers symbolizing 50 towers, that's right. Of America, so. Right, in Cambodia. In Cambodia, right, that's in Cambodia. And they have, 50, people in Asia, they have 50 and statues symbolizing the 50 states. The that's right. In Asia, they need us. They need our help, too, so we really have to rise now. Yeah. Yeah, we do. And he's right about that. Yeah. Are they waiting on us? Yeah, the world is waiting on us. But we, we got to get ourselves on. together. We got to really get ourselves together. That's right. Even, even a lot of Europeans are waiting on us. Believe yeah. Not. Yes. yes. They waiting on us. They know the truth. A lot of them know. Yeah. And they they waiting because they see shit is it, the tower is falling. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, that's true. That's true. All okay, right, so. All okay, right, I'm looking it up. So right here it says, um, Brother Josh just sent me the room, um, versus Rice, 275 U.S. 78 is a United States Supreme Court case in which that the court held that the exclusion on account of race of a child of Chinese ancestry from a public school did not violate the 14th Amendment to the United States Constitution. Now, once again, what does Negro, Black, and Colored come in and at? Come in at according to this, they used our case in order to rectify their position. As the Asians who was getting beat up just recently this year, um, Biden passes a um, nonviolent act against Asians when they still debating in Congress about our damn hair. Three weeks ago, the debate in Congress was, should children be discriminated against for their hair in school? Why do we have to ask the Albion about anything concerning our personal body parts? If we were not slaves. If we were slaves, if we were not slaves, then we wouldn't have to ask that, would we? Boss, you feel all right about our hair being in braids? What about you, boss? You feel all right about us with the twists or with the, or with the locks? Come on, boss. T- tell me your answer. I'll do whatever you tell me. I'll straighten it if you want me to. I'll cut it off and straighten it. <laughs> I'm good. I like my nappy locks. My antennas is up. But see, this is the nonsense. This, this is the nonsense, bro. Yeah, this is the nonsense. So three weeks ago, there was a actual Congress debate between the Democrats and the Republicans concerning our hair. Fuck the Republicans. Oh, no. Fuck the damn Democrats. <laughs> it was a debate, guys. I could care less. I ain't changing my hair for nobody. Okay? Guys, they were serious oh, about me. That's crazy. Yeah, it's crazy. And, but they were serious about this. And I'm looking like, oh, and it just happened to be um, Women's History Month. And guess who they kept showing on the TV for Women's History Month? Now, this is Women's History Month. Now, Black History Month was the month before last. <laughs> right? <laughs> right. This is April now. Three weeks ago was March. The month before that was February, Black History Month. But for Women's History Month, which is March, guess who they kept showing? Madam C.J. Walker. Now, who is Madam C.J. Walker? Her style. The lady of the perms and straightening. Thank you. Thank you. The straightening cone. So what they tell you at the same time they're doing the debates and comments about Black people, about so-called black people here during History Month, which is the same time that they was doing this in March, they were saying, niggas, you better straighten your damn hair. <laughs> Nigga, please. 
<laughs> you know what, Dr. Aleem? Just for, right. every, for everybody listening, just make sure that you inform people. Mm-hmm. I had a sister ask me, oh, you can wear your headdress or whatever. Anytime they come at me with anything, it's religion, and it shuts them up. If you see a brother or sister that don't know that, tell them it's a religious right, and you don't have to go into detail. That's illegal. That's why we all have the freedom of religion. Right. Yeah, I dealt with that in the military, so I understand. And there's also a cultural right to system. Right. That's right. Yeah, and philosophical right. With the rights of indigenous people. Right, and the philosophical right. So, exactly. But see, these are things that everyone is taking into consideration. They're too busy trying to um, keep us at a lower level because, you know, we are second-class citizens as long as we are Negro, black, and colored. So they want to keep that status going because these are the consumers. They can do with them as stated earlier, do with them as they will. That's a slave. That's, that's a slave. What it says right here, once again, one who is under the power of a master. So that means that I don't have to tell you about my hair and who belongs to him. So the master may sell or dispose of his person. In other words, I'll tell you what to do with your hair, nigga. <laughs> of his industry. Come on over here, boy, and pick up this wood. <laughs> and of his labor. Boy, I'm just going to give you $200 this week, even though you deserve five. Without his being able to do anything. Well, you know you had to ask me about that. You can't do that by yourself, boy. You know you need to come and ask me first. Have anything or acquire anything. Boy, you know you um in order to damn do that, right? You can't you can't go around here with that nappy. This might remind you who you are. Right. No, no, no. But but this is a slave. This is the definition of a slave. And if what we just did in Congress by debating our hair was not a slavery master type of situation. I don't know what that was then. I can't I can't tell you what that was. That that was a slave master um relationship um issue. Yeah. That any slaves have. Like that. I wouldn't even show up. Like what is you saying? Like right. Out. Right. Like I was telling his brother, he was we, uh, we were looking at this picture, and uh, the brother, uh, uh, it was the seventeen hundred picture. Right, right. And this little, uh, little more uh, was dressed up, and he had a turban and a fe- feather. Mm. And and and, and it's feathers. I mean, in his turban. Right. Said, yeah, that's a. He said, yeah, that's a little slave boy. I said, no, that's not a slave boy, brother. Right. That's not a slave. Well, he's he's standing right. I said, no, brother. <laughs> Our slaves don't wear turbans. Right. <laughs> that's, 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 that's Islamic. That's Salam. That's a Salam technique right there. <laughs> Clothing technique. That's it. Yeah. yeah. You know, I know you that you're looking at Yancha, um, Aunt, um, Aunt Jemaya on, on that um, damn um, pancake box with her um, um, hair wrap on, but <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Those turbans. <laughs> <laughs> so it says one on one questionnaire for Moorish Americans, eighty eight. What is meant by the word black? Black according to science means death. Well you get to add that chamber lessons, black according to the science that treats positive law means civilist mortus. Civilist mortus, according to black logic say means civically dead. Dead in the eyes of the law. The condition one who has lost his civil rights. This is what we're talking about. And Martin Luther King, he was on the right track for fighting for civil rights, but you got to fight for being a natural person, seen as a natural person, and being indigenous, not a human being, first. Even Malcolm was confused on that part because he said we must be first recognized as a human being. But as we've seen, human being means monster. So that still puts us back into the category of a slave-master relationship. Because if we're the monster, then you know what happens to every damn monster in a monster movie. <laughs> what happens to it? It gets killed. It gets killed. Exactly. So it says right here, it has lost his civil rights 
and capacities and is now accounted in law as dead. Is accounted dead in law. Thus it means one who is considered as if he or she were naturally dead. So shit, you might well be considered dead because shit, you dead in the eyes of the law anyway. That's why Negroes got to fight for their civil rights. Oh, we shall overcome. <laughs> <laughs> no justice, no peace, no justice, no peace. <laughs> they still doing that shit. Look at Antifa. Look at them um, Black Lives Matters go. Still walking up, up and down the goddamn streets, highways and byways, talking about no justice, no peace. Crazy. Cause Black Lives Matter not. Cause you still is accounted as civically dead in law, and you might as well be naturally dead. So now the police got a reason to do that. Oh, niggas, you already civically dead. You might as well kill you naturally too. Since you don't want to be a natural person, you don't want to be an indigenous person, indigenous being, natural being, you don't want to be that? Oh, well, what it says? Thus it means one who is considered as if he or she were naturally dead, so far as his or her rights are concerned. So, yeah, black, according to science, means death. Because you civil and small twos, based on positive law, which is a science. So when Noble Jali stated that black means, by science means death or dead, he was absolutely correct. You see, this is the depth chamber lesson that, um, because I wrote the depth chambers for the Moorish Holy Temple of Science of the World. And this is in our lessons. In the early 1900s, the definition of, for black did include the word death, darkness, confusion, devoid of light, completely dark, with no light, dismal, as in the dismal crypts, which is prison, destitute of light, gloomy, angry, darkness, threatened, malignant, soil, stained, murky, Murky, mean, wicked, immoral, forbidden, indicating disgrace, depression, sadness. Thus, black, according to science, means death. Is found online free diction or free dictionary thesaurus, which written medically, scientifically about the black death, the um epidemic form of the bubonic plague experienced during the Middle Ages, 14th century, when it killed nearly half the population of Western Europe. As a matter of fact, about 25 million Europeans was killed. Black death refers to the color one skin turned while dying from the bubonic plague. We get the word black again. Adjective, what's the dictionary? Of the color black, very dark, having dark skin, having hair and eyes, swarthy. Uh oh, swarthy. So whenever you read the books and they describe certain people as swarthy, they're saying that they are black. In other words, that they have dark skin, dark hair, dark eyes. All relating to various people having dark skin, especially those of African origin. So that's swarthy of African origin and ancestry, black people. Oh, but look at three. This is the problem that we have the word black, too. It says evil, wicked. Well, I mean, shit, I guess most people who is never black in color, in particular, who love the word black, could be evil. They, they, they you know, wicked, very sad and gloomy, sullen, hostile. Oh, yes, yeah, see, hostile. What's the Merriam Dictionary? Black, adjective, lacking hue. What? Someone who's black is lacking hue? Oh, so the word black is a monster, which is human. But what is they lacking? They lacking hue as a black person. I thought having Blackness meant that you had hue. <laughs> Not by definition. 
lacking hue and brightness, absorbing light without reflecting any of the rays composing it, characterized by absence of light, enveloping darkness, a black night pertaining and belonging to any of the various populations characterized by dark skin pigmentation, specifically the black skinned people of Africa, Oceania, and Australia, African Americans. Well, goddamn, that's damn near everybody on the planet. <laughs> Africa, Oceania, which is the Pacific Islands, Australia, African Americans. So you don't stain with dirt, the shirt with black within an hour, gloomy, pessimistic, dismal, a black outlook. But we go back to the original meaning of etymology of the word black, and then we get Saxon, Brock, Black, Black, Pale, Wayne, Libet, Blackening, Blacking, to become pale, to turn white, to become black, to be blacking, Black Ink, Black, or Bleak, Pale, Wayne, Libet, Black, Ink, Blacker, to insulate, to expose to the sun, or to bleach, also to lighten, to flash. Bleak, pale, bleaking, to bleach, bleach, pale, rain, bleak, bleakington, bleakchin, the bleach, dan, bleak, ink, blood, pale, rain, bleak, shallow, or shallow, bleak, bleacher, to bleach, to be a remarkable that black, bleak, and bleach are all radically one word. The primary sense seems to be pale, rain, or shallow, from which has preceded the present ver variety of significations. Yeah, it definitely is different definition than the ones that we just seen. So black is actually pale, which means that that would be wicked, <laughs> evil. Uh oh. On to another science. <laughs> So we go to the word colored. In appearance, semblance, or simulacrum, it distinguished from that which is real. A distinction from that which is real. So a person who is colored, as in the NAACP, National Advancement Association of Colored People. Colored people. They're colored, so therefore it's distinguished from that which is real. That means they're fake. The NAACP. It's fake. A prima facie or apparent right. Hence, a deceptive appearance. Well, if you call yourself colored, you, of course you got a deceptive appearance. So, reason why for police brutality and police profiling. Because you appear to look human, but you really is a monster. And you, you don't have nothing saying that you're natural or indigenous. So therefore, I'm going to assume that you must be a monster because you look like a dark-skinned human to me. Here's a deceptive appearance, a plausible, assumed exterior, concerning a lack of reality, a disguise, or pretext. Your melanin is a pretext. It's a disguise. Concerning a lack of reality. This is how they see that. Why else would they put this as a definition? And then if you don't believe me, we come down to the last paragraph. It says the word also means the dark color of the skin. Showing the presence of Negro blood. And hence it's equivalent to African descent or parentage. This is Johnson Wilson Board of Education in Wilson um, County, which is right in North Carolina. Johnson versus the Board of Education. Mm. You might have heard about that case. Colored, by common usage in America, this term in such phrases as colored persons, the colored race, the colored men, and the likes is used to designate Negroes or persons of the African race, including all persons of mixed blood descended from Negro ancestry. Cullings versus Oklahoma State Hospital. And it comes down and says it also held that there is no legal, technical, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let's go back. Because I'm showing you how all three cases ties into this rice versus gung loom. 
Let's read the second paragraph. But where a state constitution provided for a separate school for whites and colored races, the term white race was held as limits to be limited to the Caucasian race and the term colored races to embrace all other races. Rice versus Gong Loom. So if they go to Gong Loom again, even in the um, definition of colored. So Negro, Blacks, and Coloreds all are defined by race, by rice versus Gong Loom. It has also been held that there is no legal technical signification to the phrase colored person, which the courts are bound judicially to know. Pasca versus Dos. So the courts do not judicially need to know colored. Wonder why when you go into the courtroom and you're dealing with the NAACP and they're acting as um, consultants or lawyers on your behalf, you lose the damn court case. <laughs> oh yes, Your Honor, I'm here because I represent the NAACP. <laughs> right then and there, they know that's a joke right there. Exactly. It has also been held that there's no legal, technical signification to the phrase colored person, which the courts are bound judicially to know. We don't have to know about you. We don't have to know that. Colored? What the hell is that? We, we don't know nothing about that. But why are they telling us that this is colored? They told us the same thing. When it came to black person, they say it's a generic term. They say right there, black person according in constitutional law must be taken in its generic sense. It's contradiction for white. It's generic. What do generic mean? Generic sense. Oftentimes that means an off-brand, right? It means that it's not the brand brand name brand it, right but it's an off brand yeah. it does the same thing as the brand do but it's cheaper <laughs> right that's generic so black person is a cheaper name than more <laughs> you get it this is what is just told to us by these definitions and they all were defined by rice versus gong loom. A Chinese case. <laughs> anyway, let's look at the miseducation of the Negro. The miseducation of the Negro by Carter G. Wilson. What does he say? It does not matter so much that or what the thing is called as to what it, the thing is. The Negro will not cease to be what he is by calling himself some, something else. Well, I tell you this, is that the word more give us a more broad experience to our ancestry around the world as being a so-called global or worldly people as compared to just being confined to the United States based on lynching and castration. The Negro will not cease to be what he is by calling himself something else. But if he will struggle and make something of himself and contribute to modern culture, the world will learn to look upon him as an American rather than one of an undeveloped element of the population. The word Negro or Black is used in reference to this particular element because most people of Native um, African descent approach this color. The term does not imply that every Negro is black, and the word white does not imply that every white man is actually white. Negroes may be colored, but many Caucasians are scientifically classified as colored. I understand that everything that he's saying here is a lot of this is already within the lessons of the nation of Islam and of the nation of God's nerves. We are not all Africans. Hold up now. Listen to this. We are not all Africans. Moreover, because many of us were not born in Africa. So we're not African. The majority of us are not Africans because we're not born in Africa. And we are not all Afro-Americans. 
Afro-Americans, because few of us are natives of Africa transplanted to America. Now, that last part right there should have you thinking. He said, we're not all Afro-Americans or African-Americans, as Jesse Jackass did for us in 1988, as he was running for president. Because few of us are natives of Africa transplanted to America. In fact, none of us are Afro-American because none of us was transplanted uh, from Africa to America. He says few of us. And he's right, few of us. The Empire says only about 15%. The other 85%, we was already here before Christopher Columbus, before Cortez, before America Vanspiewski, who was called Albert. We was already here. But the fake $5 Indians don't want you to know that when majority of their genetics is Irish. And they pay five dollars on the DOS roll. That's why they call five dollar Indians, cause they pay five dollars get on the DOS roll. This was told to us um, um, by um, Doctor uh, um, Claude Anderson. He told us this. Doctor Claude Anderson told us this science already. I think it was in the second or either the third. Um, um, now, not Powernomics. Um, what was the other one that um, the guy did? The um, other little movies where he had um, um, everybody on there. He had Sabir Bay on there. He had... Um, Hidden Colors? Yeah, Hidden Colors. In Hidden Colors 2, Hidden Colors 3, Dr. Claude Anderson goes over that information. Thank you, babe. He goes over that information. So, Dred Scott versus Sanford, we know about this case, and it says a free Negro of the African race whose ancestors was brought to this country and sold as slaves. So, what did they do? They mixed the 15% into the 85%, and then they said that all of us came from Africa um, because now we mixed in. But I've seen cream go in coffee, and it's still called coffee. It will become cream. Oh, would you like some coffee with that cream? It's not just the only thing I like, brother, that's such great as my coffee. A free Negro of the African race whose ancestors was brought to this country and sold as slaves is not a citizen within the meaning of the Constitution of the United States. When the Constitution was adopted, there was no, it was, um, they was not regarded in any of the states as members of the community which constitutes the states and which was not numbered among the people of citizens. Consequently, the special rights and immunities granted to citizens do not apply to them. And he's somewhere right. <coughs> Delaware did not become a state until after the Constitution, or right around that time of the Constitution. All right, look that up. Delaware became a state December the 7th, 1787. What was the Constitution of 1786? Anybody knows? Because no, Delaware became the first state ratifying the Constitution of the United States. And it's since been known as the first state. But there was a constitution, or treaty rather, that was passed already in 1786, a year before that. And what was the name of it? The Treaty of Peace and Friendship between the United States and Morocco, 1786.
Dr. Lim, that's not long after that is when um, George Washington sent the letter to the Sultan in New York City. Right. Can you see this? Yes. What does it say? The Moroccan American Treaty of Peace and Friendship. Exactly. June 28, 1786. So, right before there was a state, we already had a treaty. There was no state. Yes. There was no space. So, let me talk about the treaty. So, once again, the treaty passed June 28, 1786. Then a year and a half later, December the 7th, 1787, was when the first state came into existence. There was no state. So they called themselves the United States of America. But there was no state. So somebody's lying. Somebody's lying. And it wasn't. It didn't happen over there in Morocco neither. In, in Africa, right? And it didn't happen over in Morocco. So. Then Rex Kenny is talking about that we were not citizens in any of the states. Were you talking about after the treaty or before the treaty? Were you talking about before there was a state or after the state? <laughs> I tell you this is that according to the Black Stone Dictionary, when you read Amor um, Amorality Law, you look up Amorality and you look up Consumer Courts, it tells you that. Um, Morocco, and it tells you that there was an empire pr here prior to um, to them um, having to be called the United States. So, what was that empire prior to them? That was the so-called Moroccan government, the Moroccan Empire, that was here, and we were citizens of the Moroccan Empire. So when he's saying that we're not citizens by the Constitution of the United States, well, remember, the treaty, according to the Constitution of the United States or for the United States, it states that treaty is the supreme law of the land, Article 6. And that means that the major treaty, which they all of them recite, all the presidents have recited it ever since I was little, from Reagan on up to um, Trump, have stated that the longest standing treaty is the Moroccan Treaty between the United States and the Moors. They had for more than a century before been regarded as beings of the inferior order. What is this? Because I just showed them a hundred years before this, we had a treaty and treated supreme law of the land. And we were citizens of these various territories. And during the time of that treaty, there was no quote unquote states. So that means that there could not have been no inferior order. And altogether unfit to associate with the white race, other than social or political revelations or relations and so far inferior that they had no rights which the white man were bound to respect. Is that true? You got everything from us? Knowledge yourself? Wisdom? Understanding? Overstanding? Science of building? Science of civilization? How to be civilized? So now their whole thing is to make us uncivilized and claim to be the civilizers. And this is what this is doing with the Dred Scott case decision. So right here, according to the Black Star Dictionary Second Edition, citizen, all natives are not citizens of the United States. 
the descendants of the Aborigines, who do they say that you are? We are the Aborigines. And those of African origin are not entitled to the rights of citizens. That, constitu does not authorize, that constitution does not authorize any but white persons to become citizens of the United States. And it must therefore be presumed that no one is a citizen who is not white. Therefore, there is a marked difference between citizenship and heritage. And that's fine because that correlates perfectly with the Dress Scott case decision. We're not citizens, nor would we ever be. I have no problem with that. <laughs> so don't lie and say that um, it's because we was inferior in centuries before. When that's a lie, you know, when less than 100 years before we was um, citizens of our territory and we were citizens of the Moroccan Empire. So here it is, the name in all caps, capital letters written is not proper grammar. So you can see legal fiction, proper, fictitious name, or the official, or the official person, either Sanam, informer. In the boom boom down. Informer. The legal term in proper persona means in one's own proper person. Well, your name in all caps means that you're not in proper person. In fact, it says that you're strong and it's homo. You're a homo. A straw man, a man of straw, one of no substance, put forth in bail or surety. It is no coincidence that the warden is called the straw boss, and the inmates are wards of the state. In other words, they are the straw men. And wonder why you have a whole lot of homosexuality shit that's going on in prison. Because they strongly as homo. Straw man. A front or third person party who is put up in name only to take part in transaction. Nominal party to a transaction. One who acts as an agent for another for the purposes of taking title to real property and executing Whatever documents and instruments the principal may direct. Person who purchased property for another to conceal identity of real purchaser or to accomplish some purpose otherwise not allowed. Artificial person. Person created and devised by human law, not God's law, for the purposes of society and government as distinguished from natural persons. Corporations are examples of artificial persons. We already read Siblis Mortus. We go to now Dummy. One who holds legal title for another, a straw man. So a straw man is a dummy. This is the Vaz, Dorothy's. The first person in which that Dorothy met on the yellow brick road was the straw man, the scarecrow, who was searching for a brain. Hence, he was the dummy. Dummy, adjective means sham, make believe, pretend, imitation. As respect basis for predicating liability on parent corporation for acts of subsidiary agent, adjunct, branch, instrumentality, dummy, buffer, or tool, all means very much the same thing. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Wow. Public. The whole body politic or the arrogate of the citizen of the state, district, or municipality, Knight versus Thomas, the inhabitants of the state, country, or community, people versus Turnbull. All right? We come down. We look at private, affecting or believing or belonging to private individuals as distinct from the public generally. Not officials, not closed with office. People versus power. So, there's a difference between in the public and in the private. In the public, in the private. In the public, you want your documentation of nationality to put on the public record because it says right here, public, pertaining to a state, nation, or whole community, proceeding from Relating to 
or affecting the whole body of people or an entire community. Open to all. So you want your documentation put on the public record because it's the whole body politic. However, you want to be able to operate in private. You know, we're trying to tell people this information. <laughs> Excuse me. Many aren't going to listen. So that means that we still have to write in order to operate in private. But they believe, based on the account of information coming from the various states of who have put their public record on uh, at the county recorder's office or at the um, civil filing superior court office, that there must be millions of us as of now. So they had to uh, move towards um, this pandemic because the Moors are waking up to who they are, and they are, and, and being that this is a Jewish Rand society. society, as my wife has stated, a Jewish um, conglomerate. What we're seeing is that they have have um, loopholes and Bill Gates is a Jew you can look at his features he's a Jew he's a Jewish man so I say woman but, <laughs> but but he is Jewish so he's a fake Jew in fact he is um, related to the um, to the families of the Rothschilds, the Rockefellers in them, the 13 top Illuminati family bloodlines. He was a Rothschild. All right? So, he gave his word that he would reset society in a way in which that David Rockefeller wanted it to be. So this is why he can come out stating that there's going to be another pandemic, and this one is only going to last six months. <laughs> Telling you, instead of lasting two years, this one's just going to last six months. Tell you, and, and this, and it won't have nothing to do with the COVID. It's going to be something else. <laughs> And this is why I have to come out and tell you what that something else is. Monkeypox. Some type of pox. So that means that you're going to have to make sure that you get enough iodine, enough magnesium, enough vitamin E, enough vitamin A, enough vitamin D3. And then you All right. You to make sure you Three times. That's that, that Lugo's iodine and pine pollen and that, uh, chlo, uh, it's the chlorella. Yeah, chlorella, yeah. Well, I mean, that's, that's what, um, the Japanese of, um, um, Hiroshima or Hiroshima and, um, Nagasaki killed themselves after the bombing in 1945, um, by the, um, atomic bomb. They healed themselves by eating, um, chlorella. And we still yep. got rid of the radiation poisoning from out the um out the system. Yep, yep. So Corella is is Sun Corella is number one. All right. Sun Corella is so powerful that it's even um been said to cure AIDS and HIV. Yep. So you know um if it can kill kill that shit, then you know um that it can definitely help you with all this other stuff. So, Corella is number one. Pine pollen is number two. Okay. Pine pollen and Corella. Turpentine. All right. Is also part of the same family line as pine pollen. Turpentine is the liquid kind or liquid formation of pine pollen. Yep. 
All right. So um, these are the things that we need on a daily basis. Um, so I'm just telling you all this now because um, this is what is coming up. We're talking about the Agenda 23. 23 means um, 2023. So we're talking about next year they get ready to do this. And also Candace. I know some of y'all don't like the Republican girl named Candace. I can't remember her last name. But um, um, she said something good. Huh? I can't hear you. It went in and out. Uh, Owens, Candace Owens. That's who you're yeah, Candace, yeah, there we go. Thank you. Some of you might not like Candace Owens, but she said something profound this past week. Um, she said that there's going to be um, an outage and a cyber attack, allegedly. But she, she basically was saying that shit is going to come from the United States. But they're going to try to blame that shit on Russia. And basically what's going to happen is that um, there's going to be cyber um, um, the internet as well as also electricity might be out for several months. They're talking about maybe up to six months. Now, Bill Gates says that the um, epidemic or pandemic is going to last only about six months. Um, no, instead, of, instead of two years, it's only going to last about six months. So this is about the same time in which that this option is going um, to occur. So they both say it's six months. All right, so um, you need to be watchful for that as well. All right, um, I'm going to I'm going to go with this. Are there any questions concerning anything before we go? All right, there's no questions. I'm going to go on and say, hey, I'll take Washington East. Let me see everybody here next week. I'll take Washington East, my good brother. Yeah, take Washington East. Yeah, Yes. Uh, I was doing some research on the smallpox that you were just mentioning about, and uh, it's called a purple pincher plant. I don't Man. know the, uh, the proper term of it, but that, I was doing some research and they were saying that the indigenous people use that to cure smallpox. Right. I'm going to try to find an article if I can send it. Send yeah, they use it here too. So, yeah, definitely. Um, you can, if you can find that article, please send it to me. Yes, I got it. That's all I'm trying to, I'm trying to look for it now. I got you. I appreciate that. Thank you. recommend for us um, from traveling, like if we were traveling with a license or without a license, what would you recommend, like the documents that we carry? Um, the right to travel document. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Did you all offer that on the website? Yes. And also, you, um, you receive your um, right to travel um, card and your um, affidavit, and you see the affidavit to the business agency, the police department, sheriff department. So State Highway Patrol, DMV, and Department of Transportation. Um, those five, at least, as well as then also to um, the Attorney General of the state, as well as also to the Secretary of State and the Governor. So I think the contact the Secretary of State, and they can they can send it to all the major outlets. I think I can put them on duty, make them do that. Um, or it's better to just do it on my own. Yeah, just to do it um, through everything, God. I know you know it's done. Then you're going to do it a certified mail return receipt. So that you go back to Green Creek and that way you're going to attach it to your right to travel um, documents and you're going to surrender your license and just stand on it to do that. Okay. All right. So, what, what website would you like me to send it to when I find the document? I'm going to try to get on it today. Um, it's on, um, it's on um, drlinabay.com and then you can go to Royal House. Send the information to Royal House. Okay, Royal House. Yes. Okay. All right. Thanks, Doc. Peace. Oh, you're welcome. Peace, God.